Hi, this is Rocky Hall, and today is September 3rd, 2016, and I'm at the Sacred Stone Camp, and I'm going to interview uh, Kenny Frost, and I'm going to show his card real fast because he gave me permission, and this is who he is, this is what he does, and this is what he's about, and he also said uh, that it's okay to put everything on here, so... Kenny, it's all yours. Who are you? What are you about? Why are you here? And what are you doing? Well, my name's Kenny Frost. I'm a Native American consultant. I've helped Native American tribes uh, in the protection of sacred religious sites. I've closed uh, some very significant youth sites, working with the various federal agencies, and have educated federal archaeologists, state archaeologists, para-archaeologists, given lectures, colleges, universities, and done inspirational speeches for various organizations. And and some of the things I've, I've done and i worked with is helping our Native people, irregardless of what tribal nation we come from, in the protection of their natural resources, particularly the water, archaeological sites, sacred sites, burial sites, the air. And oftentimes that has taken me to different regions of Indian country because each and every one of our Indian nations have been in battles with the uh, federal agencies and I've also educated federal agencies and employees on the policies of the federal government. In fact, the some of the things as, as a Native American uh, consultant, there's a, a group of us out there, now numbers are not too big, but what we do is we, we help our own people in the protection of many things dealing with Native American sites and culture and customs. That, that We have to go in and learn these federal laws just as much as the authors of those laws. When we understand those, those laws and why they were written and in the spirit of the law, then we can utilize those laws to help and protect our people. Oftentimes, it's taken on the federal government. Oftentimes it's educating the employees of those federal laws and federal statutes and policies that they can't ad cannot adhere to but maybe destroying the natural resource by accident without knowing it. Uh, 14, 15 years ago I was here at Standing Rock. Here they had all the federal agencies, Army Corps, U.S. Park Service, U.S. Forest Service, every federal agency you can imagine, the state agencies of North and South Dakota were also here. And this topic of the Missouri River, Standing Rock wanted to manage the, standing, the Missouri River from res one reservation end to the other. Technically, Standing Rock should be managing the whole river because it's the territorial lands of the Lakota, Dakota, Nakota nation and other native tribes should be taking care of this river. Our ancestors have told us long ago that we're the caretakers. We have been providing and using the lands and never taking more than we need. That teaching still goes on today. When we go hunting, we take only what we need in, to feed our families or to feed our people. And that was one of the things that we tried to educate or I try to educate the federal directors who are in charge of these lands that that we can go on to federal lands and gather sacred plants, sacred animals, uh, roots, things that we'd use for our medicine to help heal our people. Here 14, 15 years ago, sadly the Army Corps was a racial, pretty racist. We always hear the Dakotas being racist. I've seen racists, I've been subject to racism here in South Dakota, and it's there, it's alive, it's a well. And, but this is what the people here in Dakotas must contend with, have to put up with, and basically have to get used to. Sad to say, they could travel to any other state and be treated just like a normal citizen, and nobody blinks an eye but until you come back. And that's the only time that I've seen racism is in the Dakotas. Now to hear the federal director at that time of the Army Corps basically saying, I don't know why we're gathered here, and these words are burned into my mind 14, 15 years ago, and he's saying, I don't know why we're gathered here, I don't know why 
each of the federal directors have to be here. And I understand that there's policies that the United States government has to adhere to and federal laws. But we're out here in the field. We could do whatever the hell we want. And we don't have to listen or to work with the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. And I don't know why we're here, but we're going to do things as whatever the hell way we want. And that was what the director said. And at that time, I'm looking at LaDonna, who's... How long the, ago was that? About 15 years ago. Okay. So I'm looking at LaDonna, and I told her, says, did I hear that correctly? Did I, did I hear what he said? She said, yes. Oh. That's what we have to work with. Says, wait till the rest of the directors speak. So as I'm sitting there, I'm listening to the other directors, Forest Service, Park Service, every federal agency that was there, and they each said the same thing, but not as racist as the Army Corps. And the Army Corps, you know, the other thing too, he said, whatever Washington decides, we don't have to listen to whatever Washington says, federal laws or the policies. Do you remember the, the guy's name that said that? I don't remember his name. He was about 50 years old. And from what I understand, uh, he was either forced, retired, or and released. But but one of the things that I've um, you know I did is I showed a video of Reagan in Washington D.C. or no in Russia. And in the video, I showed this for a reason. The Russian reporters are asking Reagan, "You have American Indians in America." Yeah, we have American Indians, and we have them on preserves, I mean, or, or, I mean reservations. Another reporter says, well, aren't preserves zoos? No, 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 they're on reservations. Oh, and then another reporter asks him, do you, let them, uh, do you let them do their things traditionally and their culture? And yeah, we, we let them do whatever they want culturally and with their traditions. But I think it's time to bring them into mainstream America and let them be just like us. And so I stopped the video. Then I tell the directors, I said, okay, if, you're, if your president, who's your big boss, doesn't understand and know the native people, how in the hell are you going to know who, you, who the native people are when you're supposed to work with them? And that's why the Army Corps director basically said, we can do whatever the hell we want and we don't have to listen to the damn Indians quote unquote from the oh, Army Corps director. Dear. And by that time I having all the federal agencies squirming in their seat. And I says, Mr. Army Corps, these are the following violations that you violate a federal statute, the Clear Water Act, the NEPA violations, the Mining Safety Act, uh, archaeological laws. And did you know that those are federal laws that you violated and federal policies? I said, you, Mr. Federal Agency, you violated this. You, Mr. Federal Agency, you violate this. Each one of you guys violated a federal statute, and we didn't ask you questions. You freely admitted to these federal violations. And I said, uh, to top it off, that video recording back there has you recorded of these federal violations. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a law, that law background. I could file, file uh, fill out an affidavit and then submit the video, and we have a lawyer down in Denver, and he can walk that into federal court and have you charged with the federal violation. And mind you, for these following violations that you did, it's about 20 years, this one's 15 years, this one's 35 years, and, and so on. But one of the interesting things is that we're going to have, on the affidavit, the, arrest, the charges arresting you, it's only going to say Joe Blow. It's not going to say Army Corps Engineer Director or Park Service Director or Forest Service. It's just going to say Joe Blow. We're going to fax that same affidavit to Washington, D.C. with your name as the director of this particular federal agency. The president's going to look at this paper and say, he's a rogue director. These are not our policies of the United States government, and he violates federal, federal laws. And that's what we're going to do. And then finally, one of the directors says, well, what the hell do these Indians want? Uh -huh. I said, well, these Indians just want simply to manage the Missouri River from here, to manage the Missouri from here. That's all. They want to get the boating permits, the boating fees, the fishing permits. That's it. They're not going to get nothing rich. Technically, they should get the whole Missouri because that's territorial range of the Lakota, Nakota, and Dakota people. And so 
They said, well, we need an MOU, MOA. I said, well, we got one drafted up, we got one printed up, and it's ready to go. Then they said, well, we need to have a, a director <laughs> sign this. And I said, wait, are we adding another charge up to, to this of impersonating a federal director, which is another 20 years? And you guys are the federal director. And then he said, well, we need an MOU, MOA. And we said, oh, last night we worked up the MOU, MOA, and that's ready to go. Legal looked at it, it's ready to go. Then one of them says, well, the chairman's not here. We said, oh, the chairman just walked in 20 minutes ago. That door is cracked and he's probably standing there listening to what's happening right now. And and so we're going to call a break. We're going to have a uh, recess. And then we're going to have a signing ceremony. You guys, there's a little hill right on a, up there. You guys, one of you guys, or all of you can go up that hill, scream top of your lungs. Some of you can don't want to run. Go behind the building, hit your fist against the wall, cuss all you want. For those who want to run or hurt yourself, you can go over there and kick the dirt and cuss all you want. Uh -huh. And then come back in in 15 minutes, we'll have the signing ceremony. After that was done, the chairman came out and they were, so that was cool. And um, we had awesome. a signing ceremony. So that was on the Missouri River. But I believe in that terminology, that time that we had the MOU, MOA, it said the Standing Rock Nation will have control over the Missouri River, over the waterway on the reservation, including territorial range of the, of the tribe and treaty rights. So the, the thing that's happening here is this is still Standing Rock Reservation lands that Army Corps is violating. And that's one of the reasons I'm here is because we've beaten the Army Corps and the Army Corps is in direct violation of that. And the consultation process has never ever taken place with this tribe and there are archaeological sites all the way down. There are archaeological sites in Iowa. You have the mounds down there. Every place you wa walk on this land, there's some type of archaeological sites all the way down there, and the Army Corps has not done it. Army Corps has not done an EIS, Environmental Impact Statement, or survey. They have not done that, and usually when t to do that, it takes five years at a minimum, and that's fast-tracking it. So I wonder who was paid off for this to go fast-tracked? Army Corps, I've I posted that Army Corps believes that they're the last part of the 7th Cavalry only because it's the Army Corps. And they believe that they're doing Custer's work. Uh, and then I've been posting that because they're the only federal agency who's given... Do you have a YouTube channel? or I don't have a YouTube channel. It, this is on your Facebook you're posting. Okay. Yeah, it's on, on my Facebook as well as uh, knowing the Army Corps up here. It's... Uh, my experience being uh, with the Army Corps and, and hearing the racist comments uh, and that director was forced to resign there's a new director here even the Army Corps engineers in other parts of the region say it's an illegal action really <coughs> and federal agencies are also saying the same thing okay and they have commented that the project needs to stop these are fellow federal agencies. Federal agencies who have worked with, educated, in the treaties and Indian law and, and even their own policies that they have to consult and work with native tribes. And they're not doing this? And they're not doing it. So those federal agencies, as Army Corps is out of line, out of balance, need to stop. Thank you for your work. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. What can you tell us about what uh, is going on with the pipeline as of today? Uh, I've got a lot of viewers that are asking me that question a lot. What's happening right this very minute? <clears throat> today is September 3rd, 2016. As of August 30th, the permits from Army Corps has not been approved. The only permit that's been approved is to allow them to work on boat docks along the river. And that particular permit is fast track. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, Army Corps has continued to, or not the Army Corps, but Dakota Access continues to work on the land, which is in violation because there's no approval process that's been conducted. 
because of that, the people in Iowa realize that everything that's been happening so far is all illegal. And that's why people along the Missouri River in Iowa, uh, Missouri, some of the cities are protesting to have a direct action because the Code of Access is acting illegally because nothing's been approved yet formally. I've also been asked, uh, because everything that they're doing has proven to be illegal, is there a lawsuit going to be uh, against the Dakota Access Line right now? Because I know they are a uh, company that's that shared in their uh, investors are pulling out. and the, the investors are now finding out they're doing their own homework. And what's happening is uh, <clears throat> one of the investors called me uh, somehow, but he said, we didn't realize that Dakota Access didn't have the necessary paperwork fulfilled. I said, no, this is what's happening, and this is what I'm hearing from other uh, Army Corps engineers uh, in various states that right. it's not approved, so, so they're pulling out. The other thing that's also happening is, <clears throat> I also worked in natural resources long ago, and with a lot of the companies that do pipeline layout, there's fine print that oil companies are only responsible for breakage for a certain number of years. After that, on private land, the landowner is responsible for any breakage. And how are those landowners going to pay for They're not. tens of millions of dollars They're to not. fix it? It's a, it's a way for these guys to come in and swoop up your land. That's it's right. just another way for a land grab. And I want to put out there to anybody that's an investor in the Dakota Access Line that you are going to go broke because a huge lawsuit is being brought against them at this time and uh, they're going to go belly up. I'd pull out your resources as soon as... Uh, uh, count your blessings that you're only going to lose a couple million dollars and just pull out. The other thing that's interesting too is that the president had stopped XL Pipeline. This is uh, a part of XL Pipeline. The names have changed, uh. the company has changed, so it was hidden. So technically Army Corps is defying, mind you, defying a presidential order oh, okay. when the president of the United States stopped. You cannot continue this project. And you were telling me a little bit about the Obama administration <clears throat> being aware of this and getting involved as well. Can you? Uh, do you think that he will do anything in his last days of office? Because they're pretty numbered at this point. The president is aware of the situation because he came here to Standing Rock, made a promise to the people of Standing Rock, and stopped the project. <clears throat> and he's well aware of this. Uh, we have paperwork going in to the president, and we're hoping that he will fulfill his words. So far, he's done and been the only president in the United States history to do more for the Native people than any other president in the history of presidential. And I do want to say that they were actually here physically. Barack and Michelle Obama were here at Standing Rock because there's pictures of them holding uh, the Native children and the right. such. So I do want to say that they were here. They were here. They were here. And that was the promise that President Obama had made to the people of Standing Rock and killed the project because it was going to impact the people. Once again, Dakota Access is wanting to put the pipe in five miles away from the water intake of the people of Standing Rock. When the project was first initially started, it was supposed to go north of Bismarck. Right. And the people of Bismarck said, no, you can't. It's going to impact our water. <laughs> Send it down south to the native people. They won't mind or care. They, what are they going to do? Right. And, little and they're seeing what we're going to do. <clears throat> little, little did they know that you have over 90 tribes. You have over a hundred letters of support. From How many tribes? tribes did we have actually show up? I heard 120 was the last count. I think, I think it hit over 120. You had there were 500 reg, over 500 federally recognized Indian tribes, a little over 300 state recognized tribes, and a good portion of those tribes have sent letters of support to stop this project. That is incredible, and this is actually history in the making. This is history in the making because the last largest gathering of Native American people was 
during the Battle of the Little Bighorn, when yeah. quite a few nations came to help defeat General Custer. Tell me about your life in camp here. Just we'll hit a personal <clears throat> note. My life in camp, I, I flew in yesterday only because of what I was doing behind the scenes uh, for the last two weeks. Uh, this is my first real view of the camp, uh, doing an assessment of things that are needed here in order to help the people. Uh, we hope to bring portable showers in if everything goes well. Uh, that would be a blessing. With the declaration of emergency, uh, stainless steel water, uh, everything is hindered hinge on the physical paperwork of the declaration of emergency getting to Washington, D.C. Once that's approved, then we'll be able to help the people. And hopefully, because notice is going out by various news, national news media finally telling the correct and true story of what's happening here, people all around the world are supporting Standing Rock. I can tell you that I have uh, viewers in Ireland, uh, shout out to Mitch, and uh, in the Philippines, and so this is worldwide. This yeah. has gone viral. This has gone viral. We have people here from New Zealand, Australia, Germany, Africa, Africa, Alaska, Hawaii. One of the ladies who was arrested is a Hawaiian. Uh, Hawaiians are also facing their own battles there with the telescope at Mauna Kea, which I also support the Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. And so we have the Hawaiian delegations here. We had Oak Flats here who was also fighting to save their lands from uh, mining from a foreign country, which was totally illegal as well. And our president came through and took that out and protected it now. So now that nobody can come in to damage that land. Right. And that will be in, in the hands of the uh, Apache Nation, which is good. That's awesome. And so now we, we, we're working here at Standing Rock to protect the water. Because without water, it doesn't matter what color your skin is, what your belief system is, who you are, red, white, blue, purple, or green, we all depend on water. And what I see is an insurgent of a national, a worldwide awakening of nationalities, people, native people of the land to protect the water. Yeah. And it's time to say enough is enough. Pipeline companies, you haven't even cleaned up your pipelines <laughs> for tw 10 to 20 years. Yeah, they're the not going to clean them up. the damage is still there. They're not going to clean them up. They're no. not going to clean it up. No. And people are tired of that. You know, I was telling LaDonna, <clears throat> whose land this is and who's spearheading this and has been a huge support that we have the people in the Midwest where that pipeline broke. In a subdivision, the oil was 10, 10 inches thick and the people are told to move. The oil company has never compensated those people for their homes because that was their homes that they invested their life savings yes. and they got no reimbursement from the oil company at all. We need to bring those people here to show, hey, this is what they did to our lands. Exactly. It's history just repeating itself right. over and over and over again. And everybody, well, today's Tuesday, so they forgot what happened on Monday. Right. And, and if you do any research on broken pipelines, they don't, what, five years, they're going to leak. Right. They're going to leak. It does happen. There, there's a pipeline that went underneath the river. I can't remember the exact location. But one of the uh, pipeline workers said that the pipeline itself was not treated with a certain chemical so it will not break. That pipeline is doomed to break in the next five years, within oh. five years or less. And I heard yesterday in camp, and you know how camp rumors can be, so I don't know if this is true, that one of the uh, Dakota Access Pipeline workers actually was uh, killed on the job the other day. Did you hear anything yes. about that? He was killed. Can you, do you know anything about that? or? As far as, as far as what I'm reading, the accounts of the accidents which killed him, I believe he was on a hill and the equipment tipped or something along those lines and he was killed in that accident. But I send <clears> prayers <throat> to their family because that's sad. And a lot of the native people who heard about that here at the camp and around Indian country said prayers for the family yeah. because nobody should be able to lose their life at any type of job. Yeah. And particularly one that is going to, you know, 
poisoned the water. Right. And he, from what I was reading, that he also was a supporter of the camp because his family depends on water too. Okay. Many of the law enforcement officers who are out there also side with Standing Rock. They do. But they cannot, they have a job to uphold, to protect everybody. Right. And that's one of the things that, uh, that they also have said, the law enforcement people was, yeah, we weren't supportive. We don't want to be here. We we all depend on water. So they they have also they said that on various right. they uh, news organizations too as well. So, you know, the support is worldwide. The other interesting thing that I read from the people at uh, Rapid City, and we always hear negative things coming out of Rapid City. The people in Rapid City also stand with Standing Rock. Right on. And that's what I said. And you that's always, cool. You always hear negative things out of Rapid City, but uh, that was really uh, good. I, I think people are just waking up. <clears throat> I think they're waking up. I really do. Uh, it takes sometimes a beating of over the head. <laughs> yeah, and the interesting part is uh, Pierre, South Dakota, where the Missouri River hits pretty close, they, they will be impacted immediately. 18 million people is what I heard <clears throat> is, is uh, relying on drinking water out of this river. Right. Downstream. And then, not only that, you're looking at a large number of at least 100 million people who will be affected. If this pipeline breaks, it's also going, going to go and seep into the Ogallala Aquifer, oh. which also people depend at least 100 million people in western United States. Oh, wow. In uh, North, South Dakota, Kansas, Nebraska, Colorado, Oklahoma, and Texas. And there's no way that oil can be cleaned out of an aquifer. It's impossible. No, it's it's and it's pe impossible. People in Western United States need to wake up. We're reading about pipelines in Canada that are breaking, and those riverways that uh, that are affected in Canada flow into the United States. They affect the fish. They affect wildlife. There it is, people. We did uh, have some people here from Canada. <clears throat> yeah. We did have some people come, and they said they were coming back. They left. They said they were coming back as well. The remarkable thing, there was two young ladies from uh, Ontario, Canada, hitchhike here. Oh, wow. Just, That's dedication. Just the clothes on her back or backpack, that was it. And they stayed here. I don't know if they're still here, but they were welcome. In fact, everybody that has come here is welcomed by the tribe, welcome to Sacred Stone Camp, Red Camp as well and that's where a lot of the activities are going or happening and everybody's welcome to come and there's been people of every nationality and every race who has come and stood oh i've seen it yes absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah. i yeah. could i personally couldn't not be here <laughs> and and when you see this large number of people how can it be how can you not be emotional Oh, I've cried a couple times. I, I cry when LaDonna talks, when she talks sometimes. It, it hits home. It does. I cry. Because it's, it's our way of life. It's, it's our way of our future generations to have something. And it's time that all people stand up and say, we had enough. Yeah. We got to start to protect our water. It's important. Yeah. Uh, Mother Earth is crying out. We see the effects that Earth, Mother Earth is doing with volcanoes, earthquakes, all around the world. Mm -hmm. and, Very active right now. And if you really pay attention to Mother Earth in the last 20 years, when things were calm, Mother Earth was peace at peace and was pretty quiet. Yeah. Now, she knows what's going on. And our, and our prophecies, our stories, and our legends say that if we don't take care of Mother Earth, she's going to rise up and get even with us, and that's what's happening. I, I do agree with that one. I, I tell people that all the time. She will spit you out. That's right. Uh, chew you up, spit you out. Yeah. Yep. Is there anything else that you would like to add to say the American people or your family at this time? I want to thank publicly all the people who are supporting Standing Rock. We need to come together as one. We need to be united as one. We need to put aside our differences. We need to put aside our racial ideas and tendencies against other people. Mm -hmm. If we don't start coming together, our world as we know it is going to be so...
colluded that Nest, the water company Nestle's, mm -hmm. is actively getting as much clean water as they can, and at the rate we're going, those people who are in the borrowing business are going to be the multi-billionaires of the future. Nestle has uh, really depleted the aquifer up there. Uh, where's their uh, huge... They depleted the aquifers uh, in California, and now they're moving to the Great Lakes region. Right, the Great Lakes. They've moved to the Great Lakes, and they've brought it down substantially since they've been there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're, and, they're, a, they're, a, they're a leech. Yeah. They're a leech on well, the water system. And there was this... Uh, young black man that's I don't know if he was a scientist or who he was or one of the stars and he got all the various water bottles and he did a test mm -hmm. an acid test I believe and there was only two bottles of water that was real yes the, yeah the rest were fake and, yeah and treated and bad for you right and so not every bottle of water that you buy out at, out at the store is healthy. Good. Yeah, no, it's not. Or yeah. safe. A lot of people don't know that either. Yeah. Yeah. But I would like to, to say that we all, as people, depend on water. We need to come together as one. We need to live in harmony. We need to learn from the Native people. As the belief system is, the Native people are the caretakers of this land. Heed and listen to those stories. Yes. And our world will be a lot better. Yes. He didn't listen to the stories of the people of the Amazon region hmm. that are fighting for their water, fighting for their land. And that's an active battle that's going on. And yet there are people who have just barely discovered whose lands are being threatened today. It's all over. It's all over this world. It's, it's corruption that's uh, taken over. Mm -hmm. and... and when you hear the compassionate passionate pleas for help from the people, how can you not help? With that, uh, I'm going to say step up, America. You know where to send the stuff. You know where to come. Uh, I've made those videos. Check them out. And uh, with that, it, I'm going to sign off. Uh, we're at 32 minutes, and that's usually people's uh, breaking point of listening. So uh, their attention span. Uh, with that, I'm going to say Rocky out from uh, Sacred Stone here in Cannonball, North Dakota.